Sparking Zero has some of the coolest what if stories I've seen in any Dragon Ball game, but not all of them hit the same. So today I'm ranking each one based on how much I enjoyed them, how compelling the alternate scenarios were, and their potential impact on the story going forward. Now let's jump right in, starting with the first major what if for Goku's story. It starts with a choice, going solo when Raditz arrives, meaning it's just Goku and Krillin versus Raditz. This fight was no joke. Raditz is fast and hits hard. Even after learning the controls, I had to go back a few times to get through this one. Once you manage to beat him, the story adds an interesting twist. All the Z fighters join together to face Raditz, keeping Goku alive and moving things along to the Saiyan Saga on Earth. This leads into battles with Nappa and Vegeta. The fight against Vegeta is intense, especially when he transforms into a great ape. I had already struggled with an earlier Great 8 mission where I needed to take a break from the mission to train, so I knew this one was going to be tough as well. After defeating Great 8 Vegeta, there's a strategy sequence where everyone works together, using their special moves to bring him down. It's really satisfying to see characters who were eliminated early on in the anime, like Tien and Chaozu, playing a role in this fight. It felt like the game was giving them a chance to shine, but just like the anime, Vegeta comes crashing back down with everyone thinking he's dead. But sure. Sure enough, he's alive. Goku then tries to pull a move he used against Raditz, sacrificing himself so Piccolo can launch the special beam cannon to kill both of them. However, the beam misses Vegeta and only kills Goku. Goku recovers and lands one last attack on Vegeta before telling Krillin to spare him, just like in the anime. But then the story shifts in a way I didn't expect. Instead of going to Namek, Frieza and his army come to Earth. Vegeta joins forces with the Z Fighters to take on Frieza, and there's a great moment where Vegeta gives a speech that reminded me of his You Are Number One moment from the Buu Saga. The dialogue had some emotional weight, with Vegeta stepping up to buy Goku time to gather energy for the Spirit Bomb, just like he did in the Buu Saga. Ultimately, Goku finishes off Frieza with the Spirit Bomb, and Vegeta leaves the Z Fighters with a hint that he might return someday. While this what-if scenario was packed with cool moments, it's not the best I've seen from the game. The Saiyan arc was thrilling with plenty of surprises, but when it transitioned to a retelling of the Namek saga but on Earth, it felt a bit repetitive. The implications of this what if are pretty intriguing, however. With Goku never unlocking Super Saiyan and Vegeta still very much a villain at heart, things look grim for the Z Fighters down the line. Without Goku reaching that next level of power, and with Vegeta not fully committed to the team, Trunks likely wouldn't exist in this timeline. That means no warning about the androids, leaving the Z Fighters completely unprepared. It's hard to see how they'd survive against those odds, making this a timeline where things would probably end very badly for them. All in all, while this scenario sets up some dark possibilities, it's a solid start to the game, so I'd place this one in the B tier. The second what if for Goku's story really impressed me. This time, you go into the fight with Piccolo, and when he fires the special beam cannon, it only hits Raditz. This twist changes everything, as Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo then train together for the upcoming Saiyan threat. When the Saiyans arrive, Goku goes to grab the Sensu Beans, which turns out to be a game changer in this version of events. The story the story gets intense as Goku saves Yamcha and then takes on both a Cyberman and Nappa. However, without King Kai's training, Goku actually loses to Nappa. This forces him to use a Senzu Bean, triggering a Zenkai boost that makes him even stronger. This was a cool twist, as it felt like Goku was tapping into his Saiyan biology in a way that aligns with the lore. After healing up, Goku finds out that Piccolo has died, so the Dragon Balls are gone, adding another layer of tension. From there, Goku fights and defeats Nappa. Then faces Vegeta, who turns into a great ape, obviously another great ape battle where I had to really lock in. As Goku starts to falter, the other Z fighters return to help out, and he gets another Senzu boost. But this comes at a cost. Krillin is killed, which finally triggers Goku's Super Saiyan transformation, right there in the Saiyan Saga. The transformation scene is fantastic, and the fight with Vegeta is full of great dialogue. You can hear Vegeta grappling with the idea that Goku has reached this level of power, and and it mirrors his shock in the Namek saga, but happens much earlier. After defeating Vegeta, Goku heads alone to Namek to wish everyone back. But Vegeta reappears, also now a Super Saiyan, revealing that he has already killed Frieza. This leads to a final battle where Goku gives his I am pure of heart awakening.
awakened by Fury speech, which is an awesome twist on his speech to Frieza in the original. It felt powerful to hear Goku claim his Saiyan heritage so proudly, and seeing Vegeta respect that was a satisfying moment. This what if raises some interesting possibilities for the future. With Super Saiyan unlocked so early, Goku would likely master it quicker, and even Gohan might gain access to it earlier on. But with no trunks to warn them about the androids and Dr. Jiro potentially gathering data on Super Saiyans, the android threat could be even worse in this timeline. So while the Z fighters might be stronger, they'd still be in for a rough time. Overall, I loved every moment of this scenario. Goku embracing his Saiyan roots and Vegeta acknowledging him as a true Saiyan was an amazing twist. This one easily earns a spot in A tier. It's thrilling, unique, and sets up some serious stakes for the future. The rest of the what ifs for Goku's story aren't quite as deep as the first two, but they still might offer some fun twists on the story going forward. So let's see how they stack up. In the next what if, the order of events with the Ginyu Force changes slightly. Instead of Goku beating Birder, which usually prompts Jace to go get Ginyu, it's reversed. This time you fight Jace while Birder runs off to get Ginyu. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all there is to it. No other differences or major story implications. It's basically a swap of one character for another, so it doesn't affect the storyline or the future at all. I'm putting this in F tier. Another minor what if switches up the classic moment when Goku uses the spirit bomb on Frieza. Normally, Frieza survives and kills Krillin, triggering Goku's Super Saiyan transformation. But this time, Goku just defeats Frieza with his own strength. No spirit bomb, no Super Saiyan. While it's a straightforward scenario, the implications are actually pretty significant. Without Goku going Super Saiyan, the Z fighters are left a lot weaker overall. However, Goku still talks about wanting to wish Vegeta back to life, which leaves room for Trunks to exist in this timeline. If he shows up, he might still warn them about the androids. And maybe he could even teach Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan how to transform into Super Saiyans. That would definitely be an interesting twist. I'd put this in C tier mostly because of the interesting possibilities it opens up for the future. Also, like the video and subscribe if you're enjoying so far. This next what if has a bit more story. It starts with Goku jumping in to help Piccolo when he's fighting Cell, instead of waiting for Vegeta and Trunks as he does in the anime. This leads to Goku killing Cell and defeating the androids right there, which essentially prevents the entire Cell saga from unfolding. The implications of this change are big. With Cell out of the picture early on, Goku and Gohan never go into the hyperbolic time chamber, so they don't master Super Saiyan. Vegeta and Trunks still enter the chamber, but without the pressure of facing Cell, they likely don't think to push for full power Super Saiyan either. This means Gohan never reaches Super Saiyan 2, and Goku never dies or learns Super Saiyan 3 in the afterlife. It's likely they'd eventually master regular Super Saiyan over the seven year time skip, but Super Saiyan 2 would be a major question mark. Without it, they'd struggle a lot during the Buu Saga. The changes leave them weaker overall, which makes things a lot harder for the Z fighters in the future. While it's an interesting twist, I didn't quite enjoy this one as much as some of the other what ifs. I'd place this one in the C tier. This is another what if scenario where Goku defeats Cell instead of Gohan. In this timeline, Gohan never unlocks Super Saiyan 2 since he doesn't face the same emotional pressure that drives him to transform. Additionally, Goku survives the battle, which means he never sacrifices sacrifices himself to save the Earth. I'd put this one in the D tier. It doesn't add much to the narrative like the others. The next what if has Goku defeating Majin Buu and then convincing him to give up his evil ways and become good. Buu actually agrees as long as he gets to fight and receives candy. I have to admit, I'm not really feeling this one. It comes off as a bit random and it just ends the Buu saga prematurely. If you're not a fan of the Buu saga, you might enjoy this, but it feels too abrupt to me. There's not much depth here or any exciting twist, so I'm putting this in the F tier. Getting to Dragon Ball Super territory, we have a what if where Goku defeats Golden Frieza without getting caught off guard and having to go back in time like he did in canon. This what if doesn't offer anything crazy as well, so F tier again. Another what if takes place during the Goku Black Saga, where Goku, enraged after hearing Black talk about killing Chi-Chi and Goten, actually kills Black in this timeline. However, after that, things 
take a hilarious turn. Goku can't defeat Zamasu, and it's hinted that he ultimately loses. It seems to suggest that Zamasu goes on to complete his Zero Mortals plan. I found this scenario very underwhelming. Not only is it underwhelming that they end the what if on Goku failing to stop Zamasu, but also this took me ages to unlock. I spent hours trying to access this mission only to find out that I had to change the difficulty setting to normal in order to make it unlockable. Even then, it took several attempts to finally get it. Overall, I'm putting this one in the F tier. The ending feels abrupt and unsatisfying, and the effort it took to unlock it just didn't match the payoff. The next what if has Goku, Trunks, and Vegeta teaming up to beat fused Zamasu. I'm not really sure how they pull that off without sealing him away, but it happens. The good news is that Trunks' timeline stays intact, so that's a plus. I'd give this one a D tier. Goku's last what if has him taking down Jiren way faster than in the anime. Because he wins quickly, he skips that whole Ultra Instinct backfiring thing and just takes the victory on his own. I'm not sure what the implications are for Goku not realizing the strain that form puts on his body, but I'm sure he'll figure it out eventually. Overall, I'd put this one in D tier. There isn't much that changes here, just Goku winning in a different way. Now, we're on to Vegeta's what ifs, starting with one where he actually manages to defeat Android 18. From there, he trains in the time chamber as usual, but with a twist. He ends up fighting Trunks and pushes him to the point where Trunks has to use his grade 3 transformation. Vegeta recognizes its drawbacks and tells Trunks the form is useless, so they work together to master regular Super Saiyan instead. Vegeta still lets Cell achieve his perfect form, but this time Trunks actually believes in his father's strength, but he probably shouldn't, as Vegeta loses again. He does put up a better fight, however. When the Cell games come around, Vegeta starts off the fight, but Trunks takes a hit meant for his father and it pushes him to what looks like Super Saiyan 2. He then attacks Cell with a Big Bang attack, thinking he's won, but Cell bounces back even stronger. Of course, I had to dominate Cell in this fight using Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, but this ends in a powerful father-son final flash. I love this part. The dialogue between Trunks and Vegeta really highlighted their relationship and made it a memorable moment. In terms of implications on the story going forward, I think this timeline is fine. Vegeta unlocks Super Saiyan 2 and Gohan transformed into it in the time chamber, so at least Goku and maybe Gohan knows about it just form that. Gohan probably would keep up his training, so yeah, I think for the most part, their future is good. I really enjoyed this what if. The father-son dynamic between Vegeta and Trunks made it feel impactful, and I'd say it's strong enough to land in the A tier. Another what if imagines a timeline where Vegeta resists becoming Majin Vegeta. This one was a bit tricky to unlock. You need to barely lose any health against Trunks in the previous mission. When Bobbity tries to take over Vegeta's mind, Vegeta gives a speech that reminded me of his classic, you may have invaded my mind and body moment from the anime. In this scenario, Vegeta successfully fights off Bobbity's control and goes on to defeat both Deborah and Bobbity himself. Honestly, it was incredibly satisfying to beat Bobbity, not gonna lie. Afterward, they return to the World Tournament where Vegeta and Goku face off in an official match. What I loved about this fight is that it restricted you to using only melee combos, no key blasts or energy attacks. It was a cool challenge, though I had to resist the urge to use my usual moves. The match ends with Vegeta knocking Goku out of the ring and declaring himself number one. Goku still shows Vegeta Super Saiyan 3 afterward, but the fight itself felt fresh and different. As for the implications, without Majin Vegeta or Buu, this timeline takes a big turn. Goku would likely stay dead and there'd be no Buu saga. But thinking further, if Beerus eventually wakes up and comes to Earth, he might destroy it without Goku there to change him. So yeah, this timeline could lead to some big consequences down the line. All in all, I really enjoyed this what if. It kept Vegeta's pride intact and gave him a satisfying arc, so I'm putting it in the A tier. Vegeta's next what if occurs during his battle with Buu. This time, instead of making his big sacrificial move, Vegeta actually manages to defeat Buu. The scenario ends with a lighter touch, as Vegeta takes Trunks to the amusement park, fulfilling his earlier promise. In terms of implications, this timeline wraps up the Buu saga early and leaves Goku dead, similar to the previous what if. Without Buu, there's likely no threat of total destruction, but if Beerus were to awaken, the Earth would be vulnerable without Goku around. Overall, I'd place it in D tier. Another what if scenario has Vegeta wearing down Kid Buu while Goku charges up his energy in Super Saiyan 3. Eventually, they join forces and take Buu down together, leading to a final showdown where Vegeta takes on a Super Saiyan 3 Goku. This is how the fight really should have gone, and no, this isn't intentional. Goku basically had me in an infinite combo. 
forcing me to retry the mission. In the end, Vegeta wins the battle, which actually cheapens the impact of his you are number one speech that would have happened just moments earlier in this timeline. There aren't many implications on the story here beyond the altered ending to the Buu saga, but it's still a solid what if. I'd put it in B tier. We're now on to Gohan's what ifs, starting with one where he defeats Cell earlier than in the anime. The main impact of this scenario is that Goku remains alive, which could mean Gohan might not slack off in his training as much with his dad still around to motivate him. Beyond that though, there isn't much else that stands out in this timeline, so I'll put it in D tier. Gohan's next what if has him defeating Dabura, effectively bringing the Buu Saga to an early end. Out of all the Buu Saga ends early scenarios, I think this is the weakest. Not only did I miss out on taking down Bobbity again, but even when Goku suggests a sparring match at the end, we don't actually get to see it happen. It wraps up too quickly and lacks the excitement and closure that other versions offer. Overall, I'd put this one in F tier. The next what if features Ultimate Gohan defeating Super Buu, which yet again cuts the Buu saga short. This scenario likely keeps Goku dead as well. While it's another early ending, I actually enjoyed the fight itself in this one more than the previous one, so I'd put this one in D tier. Gohan's next what if is absolutely massive. It kicks off with him battling Frieza's henchmen before finally facing Frieza himself. During the fight, Gohan slowly starts to regain his potential and ultimately defeats Frieza in his final form. However, this victory prompts Frieza to launch a blast at Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo, which triggers Gohan to power up into his ultimate form and reclaim his potential. Frieza then transforms into his golden form, leading to an intense showdown. Gohan manages to come out on top and begins training with Piccolo, even participating in the Universe 6 tournament where he faces Hit. This battle becomes a hot topic among all the universes. As the story unfolds, Trunks travels back to the past, but instead of warning about Goku Black, he warns about Gohan Black. This twist completely caught me off guard. The events play out similarly to the original saga, but with Gohan stepping in for Goku and Vegeta for the most part. Also, I really love the ultimate Gohan Black form, and I would be disappointed if there was no way to play as him. Eventually, Gohan Black and Zamasu fuse, leading to a climactic team-up between Gohan and Trunks. The two of them unleash a combined blast, followed by the evil containment wave, successfully sealing Zamasu away. I honestly think this ending is better than what we got in the anime. It had me hyped the entire time. To me, this is the best what if. It's incredibly creative with an amazing payoff, and it even allows Trunks to keep his timeline intact. This one definitely goes into the Z tier. Gohan's last what if scenario has him quickly defeating Dispo. I won't lie, this fight took me several attempts to unlock the what if because Dispo is incredibly fast in this game. It was a real test of my skills. After taking down Dispo, Gohan moves on to face Toppo and ultimately defeats him. This victory leads to Universe 7 winning the tournament, thanks in part to having more fighters left standing at the end. Overall, it's a decent what if, but the implications are relatively minor, mainly just altering the outcome of the tournament. I'll place this one in C tier. Now, we delve into Piccolo's what ifs, starting with you assisting Goku in his fight against Android 19 after the virus takes effect. In this timeline, Piccolo steps in to defeat Android 19, while Goku takes a back seat due to his illness. Following this, Piccolo faces off against Android 18, and after some time, Gohan joins the fray. Later, Piccolo encounters Semi-Perfect Cell. After a while, Goku steps in to buy time for Android 18. Once that skirmish concludes, Gohan and Piccolo retreat to the lookout, where they find Trunks and Vegeta emerging from the time chamber. Seeing the need for more training, Piccolo decides to take Gohan into the time chamber. During their training, you're given two choices. Focus on controlling Gohan's emotions or harnessing more of his power. When they finally emerge from the time chamber, Piccolo chooses to fight Cell first. Witnessing Cell injure Piccolo ignites Gohan's rage, prompting him to transform into Super Saiyan 2. The earlier choice regarding Gohan's focus resurfaces when Gohan is urged to finish off Cell. However, this leads only to minor dialogue changes, ultimately guiding the narrative back on track. As the battle unfolds, Gohan gets injured, compelling Piccolo to step in and buy him some time. I nearly lost this fight due to some careless mistakes, but I managed to clutch it with some well-timed vanishes into an ultimate attack. In the climactic beam clash between Gohan and Cell, Piccolo plays a more significant role, firing a blast and urging Gohan to unleash his full potential with a decisive now. This what if offers thrilling moments and showcases the character development between Gohan and Piccolo. Overall, the story remains largely similar to the canon version, with Piccolo taking on a more prominent role. The implications for the future are likely comparable, though we might see a potentially stronger Piccolo in this timeline. I put this in B tier, a solid what if, but in a lot of ways pretty similar to the canon. You know that iconic fight between Piccolo 
on Android 17 where they essentially reach a stalemate? Well, this what if scenario takes place during that battle, but in this timeline, Piccolo triumphs over both Cell and Android 17, making him the hero of the Cell Saga. Overall, this what if presents a scenario where the Cell Saga concludes earlier due to Piccolo's success in stopping Cell entirely. However, one implication of this timeline is that the androids are not fully reformed to the side of good. While I doubt they'll cause widespread havoc, it's likely they'll still come after Goku at some point in the future. I'll put this in C tier. Now, we move on to Trunks' what if scenario, which begins with him wearing down Zamasu enough for everyone to escape back to the past. During this time, Trunks learns the Mafuba technique. Once they return, Trunks confronts Zamasu and successfully seals him away. Next, he takes on Goku Black, and with Vegeta's support, they unleash a powerful Gallic gun together to defeat him. This what if offers another improvement over the anime's ending, and I really enjoyed it. Trunks beats Zamasu and Goku Black, he keeps his timeline, everyone is happy. That's enough for me, A tier. So this what if kicks off with you deciding whether to stay in the future or head back to train in the past. I obviously went for the training option. Trunks spends some time fighting a few familiar faces and ends up deciding to stick around longer, which leads him right into the tournament of power. I think he either takes Roshi's or Frieza's spot, but they don't really clarify which one. From there, you get to choose whether to stick with Gohan or go with Vegeta. If you stick with Gohan, you fight Kale first, then team up with 17 and 18 to take on Dispo and Tapo, which was pretty cool. Sadly, 18 gets knocked out and it's just Trunks and 17 against Jiren. But don't worry, they all join forces to beat Jiren, and 17 makes this big sacrifice to help win. I was a bit worried they'd wish him back, but luckily he's fine, and they stick to the original wish. On the other hand, if you go with Vegeta, Trunks battles Kaba, then Kale and Khalifla. After that, he teams up with Vegeta to fight Tapo, and they unleash their ultimates together. In the end, Trunks wishes to bring back the universe. Honestly, I like the path with Gohan more. Trunks and Vegeta are great together, but I've seen that dynamic a lot in the game. Plus, getting to see the androids team up with Trunks was a nice touch that we definitely needed more of. I'd still rank both paths in A tier. Now, let's dive into Frieza's what if, and his first one kicks off with him absolutely wrecking the Z Fighters, which leads to him becoming immortal. The implications of this are wild. First, he takes out the Z Fighters, and then he's got immortality on his side. If he decided to train, he could seriously become the strongest being ever. I'm putting this one in B tier just because of all the crazy possibilities it opens up for the story moving forward. In his next what if, Frieza actually takes down Goku before he even transforms into his 100% form. This leads to a beam clash where Frieza comes out on top. Instead of asking for immortality this time, he decides to start training, and we all know how terrifying Frieza training can be. I'd put this one in B tier too, just for all the crazy possibilities this one has as well. This what if revolves around Frieza defeating Trunks when he arrives on Earth. Goku's pod lands and he goes up against Frieza, but in a twist, Frieza wins. He ends up wiping out humanity and rules without any opposition. While the implications aren't as wild as the previous ones, it's it's still a solid scenario. I'd place this one in C tier. Now, we're diving into Goku Black's What If, and let me tell you, these missions were tough. I don't get why they made Goku Black's missions so difficult. Anyway, in this scenario, Goku Black decides against fusing and instead takes on Vegito solo. They end up defeating Vegito and Trunks, and after Vegito unfuses, they take down Goku and Vegeta too. In the end, they win a beam clash against Goku and kick off their Zero Mortals plan. It was pretty predictable, but still cool to see play out. I'd put this in C tier. In the next what if for Goku Black, it's pretty much the same story, but this time you actually fuse. The ending still leads to the Zero Mortals plan. It's not too different from the last one, so I'd give it another C tier. Now, we've got the last what if, and it's Jiren's. It kicks off with Goku coming back to help 17 and Frieza, but this time Jiren actually wins. The twist, Jiren still wishes all the universes back. It's a pretty predictable outcome and doesn't really change anything for the story moving forward. Just a different ending, you know? I'd put this one in C tier. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Check out my other videos on the screen. See you there.